Hey, hey, uh, Kiva Digital is one of my favorite websites when it comes to doing Swedish genealogy. And today I will show you some simple searches in Swedish population covering 1840 to 1947, but also in the Swedish census from 1940 to 1985. So let's get started. Hey, hey, my name is Linda Quist and I will show you some index searches. And we can get to the index searches either by clicking open new index search tab, the blue button, or in the left menu where it says index search. I will just push this one. And now we will see that we can search in index. And the first thing we need to do is to choose what index we want to search in. So there are a lot of different indexes, but Today we will look at the population of Sweden and the Swedish census from 1940 to 1985. So the first thing we should notice is that if we pick an index source, in the bottom we will see some information about this specific index. And we can see that population of Sweden 1840 to 1947 is created in partnership with MyHeritage. And then if we look at the census of Sweden 1940, we can see that it is based on the census made at the end of the year 1940. The person I'm going to use as example in this one is my great-grandfather. His name was Nils Anton Perlin. He was born in 1888. And since his name is not that common, I'm not going to type in his whole birth date. Just going to go for the year. And I'm going to do the search in 1940 census. I press search and we get one search result. And it says Nils Anton Berlin born December 6 in 1888 in Kristianstad. And that he lives 1940 in Bubarp. So I'll just press this one and we'll get the transcribed information. And here we see his first name, his last name, his birth date, his birth parish and the birth county. We can see that he was a married man and we can see that he now 1940 lives in Bubarp. We can also see there are two links. It's one link to the record and there's also a link for the his birth record. We can see the people that are living in the same household as well. So to look at the original record, we click source, statistics of central Bidon. Here they are. And if we zoom in a little bit, you can see they are in the top of the page and we can see first line we have Nils Anton Berlin. Second line is his wife Hannah and we can see that her maiden name is Persson. It says F Persson means born Persson. We can see there are one son and two daughters and also another per person living in the household as well. We can see the birth dates. We can see where they were born. We can see if they are married and then if we scroll to the right we can see occupation we can see if they own their own business or if they are an employee at some company and then to the far right are some numbers that are used for statistics but here we have the family so what's nice with this is also that in the links i have a link to the birth record and we can see it's pointed to Farstorp C, 1877 to 1894. So this is the book that covers birth in Farstorp from 1877 to 1894. And since Nils was born in 1888, yeah, that seems to be the right book. So if I want to check out his birth record, I just click on that one. And there it says there's a new version of this volume and I want to open the newest one, of course. So here is the book and this one is not indexed. There are books that are birth books that have been indexed, but this particular one is not. So what I need to do is side by side, go to the specific date. And I use the arrows to move one page at a time. I also could move one page up here or five pages at a time. I know that this book covers 1877 to 1894, so 1888 should be perhaps somewhere in the middle. 
and I could just use this one and perhaps go to page 100. And yeah, here we have 1888 and we are in February. So we just take one side of the time, July, September, October, November. You see that a lot of these births are in chronological order, but they really don't have to be. So almost in the bottom we find him. We have December 6th and we have Nils Anton. And you can see there is a two, number two below his name. And in this case, it means that he's the second child. That is not always, you will find this information. We can see Hilma, the child below. She's the seventh child. And of course, this could be great clues if you don't know how many children there are in the family. And you can see that the child above Nils Anton, Johan Edward, it says Iwekta, which means that he was born out of wedlock. And you can also see there is no father documented for him. But if you go back to Nils Anton, you can see that First we have Hussar, that's the occupation of the father in this case. And it's Jöns Berlin and his wife Else Monstotter. And then you got another number, two and three and a quarter year. And this means in this particular case, how long they had been married. So they had been married for almost three years and this is their second child. And then you have a place and a page number. You don't always get this, but when you get it, it's very nice because then you know that on page 335 in 1888, you will find this family in the household examine rolls. And if we go more to the right, usually they type in the mother's age, but in this case, we get the father's age as well. He's 38 and she's 27. And then we have the witnesses that were present at the christening. And this is another tip for you. Write those witnesses down because at some point you might be looking for a missing sibling, something like that. And it will turn out that that missing sibling or aunt or uncle might have been a witness. And here I know it happens to be that the first one, Hannah Monstotter, is actually the sister of the mother, Elsa. So they are siblings. So it's often close relatives or close friends that are witnesses. So as you can see to the left, there are shortcuts to the different records where we have been. So we can go back to this one where we started out. Here's another tip for you, because we always want to be able to come back to that specific record, right? You want to be able to look at the birth record or the census record. And if you go up in the menu, you have copy. And if you press it, you will get this little menu. And the one I always use myself is copy source identifier. Now it's, I have copied it and I will show you how it looks like. So I paste it here and this is one I always use. It's, it's the longest one. It contains the mo most information. If I choose the second one and just choose copy pure source identifier, this is what that looks like. So if I want to be able to come back to this page again, I could just type in this AID, for example, because if you look in the top left corner, you will see the same number. But what is also nice is that I could copy the whole line. Just copy that and paste it in here and I will come to the same page. So I don't need to just copy out the AID number. I could copy in the whole line and, and the program will find the page. So that's great. It's a little bit faster. So don't forget to copy your sources and put them in your program. So on the birth record, I found Nils Anton's parents. It was Jens Berlin and Else Mons daughter. And I know in one book exactly on what page to find them. In 1888, they were supposed to be on page 300 something. But I could also use population of Sweden 1840 to 1947 in this case to search for Nils. And if I do that, I will get five records that match my search. And if I look at the oldest one, this one I found is, it covers 1888 to 1895. It sounds that he should be living with his parents at this point of time. So I press that one and I can actually see that this is page 335 and that was the page it was referring to from the birth record. So this must be where he was living at his birth. And I can see 
the people that are living at the same household. And of course, if I click the source, I will come directly to the record. And if I zoom in a little bit, I will find the family at line number six. There we have Jöns Berlin. And we got the wife, but she's crossed out. And then we got a daughter, a son, a daughter and a son. So the reason for a crossed out person is that they moved or they died. So if I look here and I go to the right, because there are some things here that are interesting. To the far right, I can see the column. It says dead, which means dead. And I can see that she died on March 16 in 1893. So that was the youngest child. He was born on February 28th in 1893 so she died shortly after giving birth to the youngest son. So one thing I noticed here is that when I look at this I can see this is the father so I can see when where he was born and when he was born and where he was born and when he was married it's all transcribed from from the record to the right but I can see that here we have an example of where they haven't typed in the Swedish letter. We have Jöns Berlin, but his name is actually Jöns. So we can correct things here, so it will be easier for other people to find it. So I will type in and do the correction, and says it's an ö, uh, and I will send it in, and then the customer service will look at it, and if they think the correction is correct, or the correction is uh, right, then they will make sure that the correction is made. That's really great. If you see uh, something that needs to be corrected, do it. It's really simple to do, and it will help all of us. So here we have the family when he was born, and we can see that the mother died really early. And we can go back and look at the other ones as well. Here we got him 1910 to 1940, and here he's living with his wife, and then we got another one, and here is only his wife, and this is another early one, and he's living with with his dad and his sibling and this one is the last one where he's living with his dad as well even if there are three records from 1910 to 1940 that just means that he's been probably living at at least three different places during this time period he has moved from to a different location so that's why he's found multiple times in that time frame so even if this search provided us with five really great record matches, we must remember that we really need to follow him from the birth book through all the different house examine role books uh, as far as we can to make sure that we don't miss anything on the way or that perhaps somewhere there is a misspelling of the name or a date that is not correct. These index searches are great starting points and we get result and we can go in and look directly on the original documents, but we still need to follow him and see that we have his whole timeline so we know where he is all of the time. For example, in, in one book he moves to another page and then he moves to another page and then perhaps he moves to another parish and then he moves back and somewhere there might be an error, misspelling or, or, or wrong date. So we really need to follow him all the way. But I think you all know that already. So we started out looking for him in the census of Sweden 1940. So let's see what other census there are and what we can find. So if we look into 1950 we get one match and here we have him first name last name birth date birth location you can see that he got married on february 17 in 1912 we can see his occupation and we can see the other persons that live in the household and that is his wife hannah and then we can go on to 1960 and here we can see that he became a widower in 1958, so that is probably when Hannah died, but as you know, we really need to check up, so that is her actual death date. Then we got 1975, and the last one is 1995, and he doesn't find anything, and, and perhaps he's dead because he would be very close to 100 years, but of course you need to check that up as well, but I know that he died in 1976, so. So before we end, I just want to show you a couple of our tips. If we go back to 1940, where we had him, we could see that he was born in Farstorp, and as you've seen, 
for all the other results, they have mostly been in Farstop as well. So Farstop is the parish, and if we go to archive search, we can search for Farstop. And if we click on that one, we will find all the volumes that has something to do with Farstop. We got the household records, we got the moving in and moving out, congregation records, birth and christening records, marriage records, so perhaps we could check out 1912 to see his marriage records because that was when he got married. We got the death and burial records. We got some general master roles, estate inventories, and all of these different volumes. So one good thing to do here is look at archive info. And this is great because if there is a parish that's been merged or split up, you will find the information here usually. And also if there perhaps has been a fire, so part of the, of the volumes or documents are destroyed, you will also find the information here. If you're looking for something and you can't understand why can't I find this record and, and then you go here and look and you'll see, okay, there was a fire, this record doesn't exist anymore. Another good thing here is where you see show on map. I can click on that one and I will find Farstorp here. And what's good with this? Well, this is good because sometimes when they move, it could be tricky to read where do they move. Sometimes they don't move very far away perhaps they move to a neighbor parish and if you see what the names are perhaps it will make it easier for for you to read or it could be a child might be born in a in a parish nearby and it still will say the other parish but then it, it could be a good idea to to check out the neighbor parish to see if you find the birth record if you can't find it where it really is supposed to be so this map is great where you can see all the neighbors and also the archive info where you can see the information about the volumes in this parish or whatever volume you are looking at. So that was what I wanted to show you today. I hope you liked this video. Please subscribe to my channel, click on the bell if you want to get a notification when I post new videos, share it with someone that you know are into Swedish genealogy and uh, have a great day.